Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, y'all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, the reason why I thought that I would do this video, this little topic, not only did I find it very particularly interesting, but this is also going to give me a little bit of a platform. This is going to give me a little bit of a video to explain, at least in my opinion, the different levels of greatness and also the different levels of fighters that you potentially have out there, especially in that of the boxing scene. And this is going to be a video that I wanted to actually do, I believe, probably about a week or two ago, somewhere around there, maybe a week and a half ago. But this video was mainly going to be about Mr. Javante Tank Davis. And when I take a look at Javante Tank Davis, you know, there are certain athletes out there. There are certain, you know, uh, fighters out there or whatever sport you may watch. Javante Tank Davis, he's almost like a Luka Doncic. Uh, Luka Doncic, of course, for those of you that don't know, he is a Slovenian kid uh, overall, of course, from Europe who is now within the NBA, and a lot of people are now starting to call him, overall, the best player of the new generation. Now, of course, that is debatable. Uh, some people would, of course, debate Giannis and Tentacumpo over him if you want to place them within the same generation. Uh, Giannis, of course, I would say is above him. Some would even argue Trey Young. I don't know if I would argue Trey Young over Luka Doncic, but it's up to you. Bottom line is this. A lot of people believe that Luka Doncic in the near future is either going to be the next LeBron James or they believe that he is going to be the new face of the league. And I certainly do understand when you take a look at the kid, he is extraordinarily talented. But I don't know if I can necessarily put him on that level quite as of yet because Luka, the furthest that he's ever gone is the Western Conference Finals. And it took him three years, I believe, overall just to get out of the first round. But when it comes to Javante Tank Davis, I almost believe that is very, very similar. Now, he hasn't lost any fights or anything like that. But my point being is this. How great or how good do we truly know that you are if you haven't really faced that type of level of competition yet or if you haven't really gone through that much of adversity? And Javante Tang Davis, don't get me wrong, that's not me saying that he has not had a couple of tough fights here and there and that his opponents maybe were proven a little bit more tougher than what he once thought and he had to dig himself out of a hole. Javante Tang Davis does adapt very well, but he is not going into the ring with fighters that, in my opinion, truly belong with him. And I like Javante Tank Davis. I think that he is an extraordinarily talent, or excuse me, he is an extraordinary talent. He is extraordinarily talented. But at the end of the day, I can't really put Javante Tank Davis on my top 10 power pound list. He has to remain within my top 15 to top 20. I had to drop him off my top 10 power pound list because who really have you beaten overall, at least at the current moment in time, within the past couple of years that really has that much of name recognition? Now, if Javante Tank Davis had that of a Devin Haney or a Shakur Stevenson or Vasily Lomachenko type of name on there, I would say that that is a little bit different. But <laughs> Javante Tank Davis does not seem very highly interested in getting in there with the top contenders. You know, I end up doing a lot of videos on Mr. Canelo Alvarez on this channel. And I always get a certain amount of people that agree with me on Canelo Alvarez. I also get a certain amount of people that disagree with me on Canelo Alvarez. And I always, of course, get a couple of people that come in here and they say, well, you know, I can't respect Canelo all that much because I believe that he's avoiding Charlo and Demetrius Bubo Andre. Well, even if you were going to try to argue that, uh, do I believe that he ever avoided Jamal Charlo? No, I do not. Uh, I don't think that Canelo truly fears Jamal Charlo. Now, Demetrius Andre, you can maybe debate that Canelo Alvarez, in my view, maybe saw him as a little bit too tricky for, you know, his worth. Uh, some may overall be able to debate that. Uh, in my opinion, is Demetrius Andre that much better than a Caleb Plant? <laughs> no, not really, but it is what it is. You know, maybe some of you would disagree with me, but at the end of the day, even if we were going to nitpick about Canelo Alvarez, the truth is about Canelo Alvarez is that he's usually going in there with top contenders, fighters that at least somewhat deserve to be in the ring with him. Now, of course, did I pick, Ke you know, Callum Smith? Did I pick Caleb Plant or Billy Joe Saunders to beat Canelo Alvarez? No, I didn't. But at the end of the day, all those guys were legitimate champions that at one point in time and at the time were looked at as a great fighters. If you take a look at Billy Joe Saunders, he had wins over Chris Eubank Jr., David Lemieux, Andy Lee, and even a couple of other guys that I may not currently be able to mention at the current moment in time. If you take a look at Caleb Plant, he was a very decently slick, very decently skilled and talented fighter at the 168 pound division who had a win, especially over the very dangerous and probably roided up Jose Uzgadegui at the moment in time. And then, of course, Callum Smith, he had a couple of decent wins. You know, he was not the most skilled fighter that I've ever seen, but he was skilled enough overall to be at least an A-level fighter, and he was as powerful as an ox. 
So Canelo Alvarez at the end of the day, and then that's not even bringing up the recent Dimitri Bivol fight that he had. And that's not also even bringing up the Migo Kodos, the Gennady Golovkins, the Danny Jacobs, the Austin Trouts, the Arasani Laras. So people always want to bitch and moan about Canelo Alvarez allegedly not facing a great competition. Dude, if you want to maybe say that <laughs> the Jamal Charlo and Demetrius Bubo Andre fights have not happened, listen, that's your provocative. Uh, or that's your provocative, uh, you know, however you say the word. <laughs> but at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, uh, I cannot get on Canelo Alvarez that much because Canelo has shown me that usually uh, if he's not going to get in the ring with a Jamal Charlo or Demetrius Bubo Andre, he's going to face someone that, in my view, is somewhat on their level. And a lot of people are not going to agree with that. It's okay. It is what it is. I'm sorry, but in my opinion... Jamal Charlo and Andre, they're not really on the level as what a lot of people try to say that they are, but it is what it is. Uh, but anyways, when it comes down to Mr. Javonta Tank Davis, Rolly Romero, Mario Barrios, and Isaac Pitbull Cruz, even though these fighters are somewhat semi-talented, you could never, in my opinion, debate these fighters as real A-grade caliber fighters. And none of those fighters also were ever legitimate champions. So there is a difference between what Javonta Tank Davis and Canelo Alvarez is doing what Javante Tank Davis is doing is getting in the ring with fighters that basically are going to get washed up and mopped up by him in the ring. Canelo Alvarez, even though he's facing fighters that, yes, it probably isn't 50-50, at least with Caleb Penn and Callum Smith, those guys are at least legitimate champions. And if a lot of other fighters fought those guys, like Jamal Charlo or Demetrius Bubo Andrade or even David Benavidez, they probably would have a hell of a time with them. So that's how you know that Canelo Alvarez, in my view, is on a different level compared to most fighters. And Javante Tank Davis, in terms of a talent level, I believe that he is on a different level than most fighters. But I can't really put you on the great level until I see you face up to adversity. And there are different levels of greatness. You know, I had a couple of people debate with me. I believe overall I had this one dude <laughs> overall comment on a couple of my videos. I believe his name was Reginald Powell. And it seemed to me like he had a little bit of a racial issue, but it is what it is. Not only was he talking about Canelo Alvarez, and he was bringing up not some of the worst points in the world about the Canelo Alvarez situation, but you could tell even with the Tyson Fury and with the Vasily Lomachenko points that I brought up, of course, he did not agree with them. And I can pretty much overall tell uh, a lot of these guys, they may come from my channel or come, you know, uh, for my channel, and they might be from the Dante's Boxing Nation channel or Boxing Ego channel. And they'll say, oh, well, how can you say that Lomachenko is a great fighter? How can you say that Tyson Fury is a great fighter? How can you say that Canelo Alvarez is a great fighter? Because all those guys have faced up to adversity. Uh, you're not going to sit here and tell me that if Canelo Alvarez, that if he retired today, that he would not be a first ballot Hall of Famer. He would be. Uh, there is no doubt about that. If Tyson Fury retired today, his wins with Deontay Wilder and Vladimir Klitschko, he would be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Okay? Vasily Lomachenko. You know, even though he's not quite on the level of those other two guys, in my opinion, in terms of his resume, he would be a first ballot Hall of Famer. You cannot have wins over Gary Russell Jr., who was a champion. You cannot overall have wins over again more again now, who, when Vasily Lomachenko beat him, was a top 10 pound per pound fighter. You can't beat Nicholas Walters, who was a former probably top 20 pound per pound fighter and undefeated when Lomachenko beat him. You know, and also Jorge Linares, who was looked at as the best 135 pounder. And that's not even including, you know, other wins over fighters like Jose Pedraza, who was a former champion, and overall Jason Sosa and other fighters. Lomachenko has beat eight champions, I believe, within his career, possibly even more. So don't give me this shit overall about, oh, well, you don't know what you're talking about. Listen, overall, I know the difference between a decently great fighter. You don't have to call every single one of those fighters all time great fighters. But Javante Tank Davis can't even be looked at on their level. He certainly is not on the Canelo Alvarez level. Uh, I do not believe him to be on the Tyson Fury level, really. I don't even think that that's really that debatable in terms of greatness, in terms of their resume for their divisions. And in terms of a Lomachenko, even though Javante Tank Davis, of course, is undefeated, Javante Tank Davis and Vasily Lomachenko, if they were to retire today, you would have to have Vasily Lomachenko over him. And that's not even, <coughs> excuse me, and that's not even counting... Uh, overall, people like that of a Shakur Stevenson, who recently got a great victory over Oscar Valdez, or Devin Haney, who recently got a great victory over George Cambosis. Two wins, in my opinion, that are greater than any of the victories that Javante Tang Davis has in his career. It just is what it is. But anyways, we're going to get into the video. We're going to see what Mr. Boxing Ego has to say, and we're going to talk about the topic. Oh, uh -huh. Did you smell it? <laughs> 
<laughs> like I said before, Shakur Stevenson, he, he's a hell of a fighter. Devin Haney, he, he's he's a young, hungry lion. He too is a hell of a fighter. Floyd Mayweather, easy work. I ain't got to worry about it. Says Devin Haney and Shakur Stevenson should fight each other instead of worrying about Javante Tank Davis. That's what I will talk about in this video. What up, fight world? It's your boy Ego. You know, Floyd Mayweather the Jr. Uh, not too long ago, he stated on the note that he believed that Canelo Alvarez was avoiding that of David Benavidez. But then when it comes to his boy, Javante Tank Davis, uh, who's, been, who's been repeatedly facing bums, let's just be real, uh, or at least fighters that are nowhere really near on his level talent-wise, uh, apparently Canelo Alvarez was allegedly avoiding that of David Benavidez, but Javante Tank Davis, oh, well, just let him do what he's going to do. Uh, so Floyd obviously had a little bit of a uh, uh, thing with Canelo Alvarez. I believe it was because a lot of people were comparing Canelo Alvarez to him, and he did not like it. So it was his way overall of basically saying that Canelo is not on my level. Uh, and now that you notice now that Canelo recently lost, uh, now Floyd Mayweather Jr. has been saying positive things about him again. Uh, so do I believe that maybe Floyd Mayweather Jr. kind of looked at Canelo Alvarez as a threat? Yes, I do. Um, but it is what it is. Now, don't get me wrong. Is that me saying that Floyd Mayweather Jr. actually believes that Canelo was greater than him? No, but I believe that, you know, he believes that the media was going to try to push that. Uh, and the media more than likely probably was going to try to push that with Canelo. And if Canelo is going to be able to, uh, let's say, possibly, I'm not saying that it's a huge possibility, but if he somehow is able to unify or beat Dimitri Bivol in a rematch and then somehow Arthur Bitterbeev, there is going to be a certain amount of people that do debate that. So it is what it is, but we'll see what happens. And I'm back with some more boxing. Boxing ego, quick kiss, less intro, less filler. Let's get it. So Floyd Mayweather did an interview with Fight Hype and said, quote, Shakur Stevenson's a hell of a fighter. Devin Haney, he's a hell of a fighter. But guess what? If top rank has Devin Haney and Shakur, they need to fight each other. Don't worry about Javante Davis. Let Tank continue to do what Tank's doing. Now, let him continue to do what he keeps doing. So what, fighting bums <laughs> off the street? Uh, I mean, it's no offense against Floyd Mayer the Jr. Uh, but like I said, uh, I don't want to hear you talk shit about any other fighter allegedly not facing any big names until your boy Javante Tank Davis gets in the ring. All right, with someone who's actually a competent fighter. Because uh, once again, it's no offense against Javante Tank Davis. Rolly Romero could not box. Uh, he had great athleticism on his side. But <laughs> well, what the hell does that matter uh, when you cannot box? And it's not like he was even at Deontay Wilder to where he has a punch that could end anyone's overall uh, fight at any moment in time. And on top of that, you know, he has at least somewhat of enough skill to somewhat offset certain fighters in that division. Uh, Rolly Romero is not even one of the top seven guys at 135. It just is what it is. Uh, I'm not even 100% sure if he would beat someone like a George Cambosis. That's what I personally believe about Rolly Romero. Mario Barrios was never even one of the top five guys in 140, in my opinion. You cannot rank him there, not even in terms of talent. And if we were to talk about Isaac Pitbull Cruz, he's a tough little fighter. He's a good little fighter, but he's not an A-grade fighter. Uh, so it just it, it is what it is. But I find this so particularly interesting because a lot of these same guys who apparently wanted Canelo to face Andre uh, and Jamal Charlo... And they were always alleging that Canelo Alvarez apparently was avoiding those two guys. And like I said, you might have an argument when it comes to Andre that maybe Canelo felt that he was a little bit too troubling for, you know, his worth. Uh, but at the end of the day, at least Canelo will get in the ring with legitimate, decent A-grade champions, even if they are A-minus champions. And that's pretty much how I look at his Andre and Charlo anyway. Uh, but when it comes down to it all in all... Javante Tank Davis is not even getting in the ring with legitimate A-grade champions. He's not even getting in the ring with champions in the first place. Uh, and if they are champions, they're either in intercontinental or regular or interim champions. And those, in my opinion, those are fake champions. Those are not real champions. Unless they were fighters that, you know, maybe like a Jerron Boutsenis, let's say that he were an interim champion at the current moment in time. No, you would not be able to call him a legitimate champion. But maybe if you were going to argue that he's more of a legitimate champion than some others... Uh, because of his skill set, you could argue it. Javante Tank Davis is not even fighting people like that. So at the end of the day, and I like Javante, but he's going to have to step up his game. You know, I'm sure a lot of people feel different ways about this. 
But I, I don't really see anything that Floyd said that's wrong. You know, some people are going to say that this is a deflection. Floyd always seems to get this, you know. I remember when Floyd Mayweather, when Keith Thurman was calling him out and Keith Thurman was saying he's ready to burn money and things like that, Floyd Mayweather said that Keith Thurman should fight instead Errol Spence Jr. And some people even use this as kind of a catalyst to get on Floyd's case and suggest that Floyd was ducking. Keith Thurman overall avoided Errol Spence Jr. like the Black Plague. <laughs> he, he did not want to fight that guy. Every single goddamn time, Errol Spence was possibly ready to fight him. All of a sudden, this dude had an injury to pull out of his damn ass. <laughs> every, every goddamn time. Keith Thurman and using <laughs> Errol Spence as a bodyguard and as security. But really, from what I've seen in Keith Thurman, and this is, I like Keith Thurman, not a knock on him. I don't see him beating Floyd Mayweather. I mean, if you're going 12 with Leonard Bundu. Well, I agree with you on that. I remember when Keith Thurman and a lot of people, I even remember Stephen A. Smith, they said that Keith Thurman deserved the title shot over Floyd Mayweather Jr. Now, just because I believe a fighter doesn't really have a particular chance against another fighter does not mean that they may not deserve a shot. So when I say all in all that, you know, Charlo and Andre, you know, those fights have not happened with Canelo, that's not me saying that they don't deserve a shot. That's just me saying that I really don't view those fighters really any much higher than that of a Caleb Plant. Some people may disagree, but all you have to do is take a look at Demetrius Andre and a couple of his big fights and you'll see what I'm talking about. And same thing with Jamal Charlo. <laughs> so it just is what it is. I'm sorry. I just don't see them as dominant as what people say. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, once again, when it comes to Javante Tank Davis, he is overall going to have to step his game up, okay? Because he is getting in the ring with fighters that really don't even belong, really, really not even close to belong uh, in the ring with him. I mean, that last fighter, Roley Romero, I mean, really, really, what, what appeal did that fight really have other than the background and the history that they had? Because in terms of skills, there was nothing that Roley Romero had over Javante Tank Davis. There was nothing that he could beat him in. Even in the power department, I don't think that he could beat Javante Tang Davis. He had no legitimate chance. You know, it just is what it is. And, you know, you lose to Pacquiao, things like that. I don't see how you were going to beat Floyd. But when it comes to the Keith Thurman point, once again, yes, I remember that. I don't think that Keith Thurman would have ever beat Floyd Mayer the Jr. either. I think that he lacks a little bit of the defensive prowess to beat that of Floyd Mayer the Jr. I think Floyd would have been too technical. I think that he would have been too good. Floyd fought guys that are... And Floyd, in my opinion, fought several guys that were probably greater and more dangerous than that of a Keith Thurman. I think that Miguel Cotto was a better fighter, was a decently better fighter than Keith Thurman. I think that Shane Mosley was probably a decently better fighter than that of a Keith Thurman. Or that could have been close, maybe a 147. Uh, but I probably would have picked Shane Mosley at least at his best. Uh, he also fought Ricky Hatton, but I would at least debate was greater now... Had that fight happened at 147 because of Keith Thurman's size, he maybe would have beat Ricky Hatton. But there was a couple of other fighters that Floyd fought that were greater than him as well. Manny Pacquiao, of course. Uh, you know, and there might be a few others that I'm currently missing. Oscar De La Hoya, even though Oscar, of course, you know, he was, uh, you know, he, he was a little bit older at the time. Of course, you know, styles make fights. So you never know. But with Keith Thurman's style, I just, I don't think that I ever would have seen him beating Floyd. Like Canelo, who are bigger and likely stronger or canelo was another one that i forgot that floyd beat as well canelo as well and canelo was uh, even a great fighter back then even though he was a little bit uh you know i'm not going to say that he was completely green but he was uh he was probably an a grade fighter back then when floyd beat him now i would say he's a plus and some people would disagree with that uh i would say uh, and then you know i don't i don't think that it's any insult towards floyd mayweather he still beat a very great version of canelo uh, but I would say that Canelo at the current moment in time, that he has learned more and that he is more experienced. I just, I don't think that there's any problem with saying that. Just as strong, you know, at 152, and then Canelo rehydrated, stuff like that. He fought De La Hoya. So if those guys didn't beat him, you know, I don't think Keith Thurman would. So some people are going to be rubbed the wrong way because he's pitting two other, you know, rising stars in boxing against each other. But again, I don't see anything really wrong that he said because that's facts. I mean, if they're both with top rank, Devin Haney did a multi-fight deal. Per, like personally, I would rather see Devin Haney and Shakur Stevenson for real than Devin Haney versus George Cambosos too. I understand. Well, Mr. Eagle, I don't really have a problem with that point either. 
but keep the same energy with Javante Tang Davis that you did with Canelo Alvarez. Because we all know that you've been alleging for a very long time that Canelo Alvarez has been avoiding Demetrius Andre and Jamal Charlo because you're a part of the LDBC slash new media cult. So if you're going to say that, then you better say the same thing with Javante Tang Davis. But of course, that is not going to happen uh, because Javante has the complexion for your protection. You know, there was another dude overall that, you know, went in one of my videos and they said, oh, how could you say that, you know, a black fighter or that, you know, that one of them had the complexion for the protection uh, just because they do not have the complexion for the protection for the mainstream media does not mean that they don't have the complexion for the protection in other areas like that of a YouTube channel like this. And if you can't really grasp that, then <laughs> it's no offense, but you're probably not the most intelligent dude on planet Earth. The nature of business is not really Devin Haney's doing or saying, but there's a rematch clause. That being said, I still don't really need to see Devin Haney versus Cambosos Jr. We're just kind of going through the motions here. But I seen what I needed in the first fight, and I don't see really what would be much different in the rematch. So it would be cool. I would agree with that. Uh, I agree. I don't think that George Cambosos can do much more. Uh, of course, your energy level was different with the Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder rematch, but you expect that. It is what it is. Uh, he supported a fellow fighter in Deontay Wilder. I really didn't have a problem with that. Uh, but Devin Haney, George Cambosis, that's not really a rematch that I'm interested in either. I'm not really even 100% sure if George Cambosis is going to claim the rematch clause. Uh, George Cambosis claims that he knows what he has to do. Uh, I don't think George Cambosis even truly 100% believes that he can beat a Devin Haney, and I don't think that he can. Uh, it's not that I think that Devin Haney is just so flawless, don't get me wrong, he is a very talented fighter. He's in my top 10 pound per pound list right now. Uh, but George Cambosis is not the style to beat Devin Haney. If there is a style uh, with fighters at their best that, in my view, would have the best chance over Devin Haney, it would either be a Vasily Lomachenko or Javante Tank Davis. And they're probably going to have to pressure Devin Haney to the max in that fight. To see Devin Haney and Teofimo or Devin Haney and Shakur or somebody else outside of Cambosos, but... Again, I understand. I don't think that Tiafema Lopez uh, has the ability to beat Devin Haney anymore either. Uh, maybe when he was undefeated, but I don't think at this juncture. And Tiafema Lopez, in my view, even though he is a very talented fighter, I think that he had the right style to try and beat a Vasily Lomachenko, but I don't think that he has the right style to beat Devin Haney at all. Uh, I think that Vasily Lomachenko and I think that Javante Tang Davis are the possible worst matches for Devin Haney if they do show their A game. Now, Vasily Lomachenko fights Devin Haney the way that he fought <laughs> Tiafima Lopez. He's going to lose that fight because he can't fight uh, Timid the way that he did in the Tiafima Lopez fight. And if Javante Tank Davis fights Devin Haney the way that he fought against Rolly Romero and Isaac Pitbull Cruz, he's probably going to lose that fight as well. Because uh, Javante Tank Davis for the past couple of fights now, apparently he had a broken hand uh, against Isaac Pitbull Cruz uh, but against Rolly Romero, I mean, he just, he looked really subpar in my opinion. In fact, he probably was losing the fight, I believe, by one round uh, before he ended up knocking him out. Now, of course, that fight only lasted six rounds, and Rolly was a bit bigger, and he was decently powerful, but Rolly has no boxing skills whatsoever. Uh, I would be very interested to see what version of Javante Tang Davis would show up in a Devin Haney fight. Now, the the game works, and at the end of the day... He has a rematch clause, so he has a right to the fight, despite what I think or anybody else thinks. As far as Shakur and Devin Haney, another reason why I'm not mad at what Floyd said is because Devin Haney, or actually Shakur Stevenson, did it. Well, there's really no reason to be mad at what Floyd Mayweather Jr. states. <laughs> there's really no reason to be mad uh, overall at what anybody states, unless they, you believe overall that it is a personal attack at you. Uh, but that's overall what mainly fans do. They get their panties in a twist about usually what people say. That's why there's this Shakur Stevenson issue uh, with Dante's Boxing Nation, uh, you know, because they got so pissed off that Shakur Stevenson said something about Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez that they said, hey, why are you supporting him? Uh, and then Shakur Stevenson had to bite back and said, you know what? Uh, if you're going to play it like that, <laughs> then fuck all of you. Uh, and once again, I applaud Shakur Stevenson for that because once again, basically what they were alleging about him was, almost that he was a seller or that he was not as much for his own people. Right, that's what they were trying to allege. Oh, because he gave credit to a Mexican fighter. Uh, but anyway. Interview himself, and he said he could see himself moving up to 135 pounds in the near, near future. So 
that was his own personal opinion. You know, he said that out of his own mouth. So he was bringing up the fight too, as well. So it's not just Floyd Mayweather pushing Devin Haney versus um, Shakur Stevenson. You know, Shakur Stevenson himself has entertained the idea of moving up and making the fight. As far as Javante Davis, I, I still feel the same thing. I think Tank Davis is what they say he is. The guy from 130 to 140 or whatever, he's the A-side, he's the biggest figure, he's the biggest name. That's just the reality of it. So I, I do feel like some of the other fights, Shakur... That is the reality of it, Mr. Boxing Eagle. But my question is to you, is that when it came to Mr. Canelo Alvarez, you were not having this type of energy. And this is one of my points when I try to review these channels. Uh, a lot of people, they'll say, oh, well, you know, you just review these channels because they're telling the truth. And, oh, no, you don't like them supporting black fighters. Like, dude, it has nothing to do with that. I have videos where <laughs> they'll say one thing about a fighter. And then when it comes to another fighter in the same exact situation, they will have the exact opposite opinion. And if you don't believe me, you can look at some of my past videos. There is a video, a multitude of videos, where Boxing Ego says that, Andre and Charlo should not have to fight each other because that would make them less fresh. And that's the reason why Canelo Alvarez wants them to fight each other first so they're not as good of a versions of themselves. But when Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney, who are undefeated, who both apparently called out Javante Tank Davis, who's also undefeated, apparently there's no problem with Devin Haney and Shakur Stevenson fighting each other. So, come on. Let's, let's cut the bullshit. <laughs> let's be real. What are these channels really truly about? You tell me. Stevenson and Devin Haney... Those are going to be harder to make because those guys are talented fighters as well and they make good money and you know they're rising stars as well so it's going to be harder to facilitate the other angle is whether people want to hear this or not the business the business of boxing i don't know that like you have to understand there's only but so many hardcore boxing fans like i would say in the tune of 250 to 350 thousand at any given moment. It's not like the NBA or something where it's just like you have an ongoing 5 million, 10 million fans or, or whatever the number is for those respective sports. So hardcore fans want to see like Shakur Stevenson versus Javante Davis, but I don't really know that it is the type of fight that right now in the here and now is big enough where you would get ESPN and Showtime and they're going to be like, okay, we want to make Showtime and ESPN and split the pie and all that stuff. What do you mean overall that it's not big enough? You apparently claim that Javante Tang Davis overall is, <laughs> at least at certain times, allegedly the biggest superstar in all of boxing. Apparently the fight all of a sudden ain't big enough. Get that shit out of here. Because uh, when it came to Canelo Alvarez, uh, now of course Canelo, he is a decently bigger star than pretty much everyone else, if you were to make that point. But at the end of the day, when it comes down to once again... It's no offense again, Mr. Ego. I don't think that he always makes the worst point in the world, but he is so full of shit, uh, depending on what fighter he ends up talking about. Once again, this was the exact same situation, uh, at least overall in certain terms, with Canelo Alvarez, when allegedly he was ducking Jamal Charlo and Demetrius Andre, even though he was fighting fighters, in my opinion, that were pretty much on the same caliber. Uh, <laughs> and, and apparently he was avoiding those fighters, and Everything Ego said was Canelo was avoiding and, you know, he basically was trying to make him weaker, yada, yada, yada. And then when it comes to Javante Tang Davis, all of a sudden he completely does, he does a complete 180. All of a sudden it's completely different. That would be needed to make um, those crossover fights. So Javante Tang Davis apparently is one of the biggest stars in boxing. Apparently Canelo, who they've tried to tear down his star power uh, for, for such a very, very long time. And don't, don't get it twisted. I'm not some Canelo Alvarez super fan. But listen, I'm, I'm always here to talk about certain narratives, and it's just so obnoxious when I hear certain channels overall say, oh, well, Canelo hasn't fought anybody, and, you know, Canelo, all the know, he's not really that big of a superstar. Listen, it's, it's just no reason in denying it. Not only is Canelo a great fighter, and not only does he usually face decent competition, but when you take a look at his pay-per-view numbers, he pretty much kills almost anyone else overall that is in the industry. It just is what it is. Those are the facts. You can like it, you can not like it, but those are the facts. Again, I've said this before, you have to look at how many fights in the history of boxing have been done with multiple networks. Wilder Fury, right? You got Mike Tyson and Lennox Lewis, Mayweather Pacquiao, 
Mayweather McGregor. It's not that many, you know what I mean? So the stakes have to be high for all involved. To well, Javante Tank Davis is allegedly one of the biggest superstars in boxing. According to you, hey, it shouldn't be that big of a problem. And if it is that big of a problem, then don't compare his star power to that of a Canelo Alvarez because Canelo Alvarez could fight any fighter out there no matter what the goddamn network is. And he could do anywhere from 350,000 buys to almost a million buys. So once again, you know, uh, and listen, that is not me trying to say, uh, once again, that is not me fanboying out about Canelo Alvarez. All that is me saying is that these dudes, they've been trying to tear down certain fighters like Canelo Alvarez for so long. And they've been full of shit this whole entire time. That fight. So to me, it just sounds like a pipe dream. Tank and Shakur Stevenson. And Shakur at the moment is not at 35. I don't know if Tank's planning on going back to 130. So I, I just don't really see the fight happening. So why not get Shakur Stevenson versus Devin Haney? You know what I mean? Well, now you're thinking. Uh, and I don't necessarily have a problem with that. And that's the same thing that I've been telling Demetrius Bubo Andre and Jamal Charlo. If Canelo does not seem interested in you, then you should try to fight each other to possibly make the fight bigger. Or if you do truly believe that Canelo Alvarez is avoiding you, then fight some of the top contenders. You're going to have to basically do anything that you can do. So that also means probably going after David Benavidez. David Benavidez is a Mexican-American fighter. He's already going to have a certain amount of followers and a fan base because of that. He's on Showtime. And on top of that, when it comes down to it, anyone who possibly beats him, it is going to be looked at as a very big fight against Canelo Alvarez. But apparently those guys are not willing to do that. So don't sit here and, and come to my channel and say that, you know, oh, you know, these fighters, they're willing to do anything to fight Canelo. No, they're not. Okay? No, they're not. Uh, what they want overall is a lottery ticket over Canelo. Now, don't get me wrong. They do deserve a shot over Canelo, just like Caleb Plant and Callum Smith. But once again, if Canelo does not have you in his sights, and if you truly want the fight, no problem. There are other fights to take. And it's the same thing with Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney. If Javante Tank Davis does not seem... Uh, like he wants to fight you, no problem. <laughs> if you truly believe in your ability as a fighter, you're going to fight other big fights. Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney more than likely are not going to have a problem with fighting each other. Okay, so it is what it is. Anyway. But, you know, I think there's other obstacles in the way of that as well, like Cambosos Jr. So that's my take. Let me know what you guys think. Floyd Mayweather said they should fight each other and let Tank do what Tank's doing. You know, I do want to see Tank in with a big fight. Like, to me, I think even Tank versus Lomachenko, I think you might be able to pull that off because of the level of praise and, you know, two gold medals and stuff like that, more so than Shakur Stevenson or Devin Haney even. You know what I mean? But... Well, I think that it's about around the same level. Uh, but that also is if Mr. Javante Tank Davis is even willing to get into the ring with those fighters in the first place. They all could be good fights. Let me know how I did in this video. And I'm uh, introducing... But anyways, that's really about it for this video. Uh, I agreed with some of Boxing Eagle's points, but once again, I find it very hilarious, <laughs> depending on what fighter it is. He has a completely different energy level. But that's really about it for today. Uh, anyways, thank you all so much for watching. We will see what Mr. Javante Tank Davis does from here. It is going to be very particularly interesting. Anyways, that's really about it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you all later.